Welcome to Bunnyfish Crafts. I'm your host, Heather, known as Bunnyfish on Ravelry, Plurk, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is Monday, the 28th of October, and this is episode 50, Keeping the Posties Hopping. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. My week was pretty good. The only really eventful things happened yesterday. The kids got new beds. They're the Christmas presents from Steve's dad. Steve's dad and his wife came down yesterday. They set up, well, Steve and his dad set up the bases of the beds, and I prepped the mattresses because my kids are little, and they're really nice mattresses. They're the kind of mattresses that should last, you know, through high school. So we got them plastic covers because accidents happen. So I set up the mattresses, they set up the beds, the kids love the beds. Mara slept in her bed all night, which I was a little bit nervous about because she doesn't always sleep in her bed. She frequently joins me in my bed, which is obnoxious. And I was worried that a new bed would be, you know, weird and she'd wake up in the middle of the night. But no, she slept in her bed the entire night. I know it's only one night of the trial run, but I hope that that goes on forever. The other cool thing that happened was we have new neighbors. We're no longer the new kids. The other rental property has been rented for a month, I guess. That's what the lady was saying, but she just is really, really busy. She owns her own business and her husband or boyfriend or whatever, the guy in her life owns his own business too. So they're really busy and they have two kids who are the same ages as Mara and Gabriel practically. The boy turns five in January and the girl turns three in within the next month. So that's really cool, right? Yes. Also really cool is craft alongs. The hand spun sock craft along ends on Thursday, which is the 31st of October, which is Halloween. So get your photos in. I will do the drawing probably November 1st. Just do a little snippet recording and upload it directly to the thread. We will have a sweater knit along starting on November 1st. One entry per person, so you can make any size sweater you want. You can pick up a work in progress sweater too and finish that during the two months. You can knit sweaters for dogs. I would prefer that you knit, you know, something for uh, something of an actual size, so not an ornament. But dog sweaters count. You could do a Chihuahua sweater. I would count that. Baby sweaters, size XXXL, men's sweaters. If you're crazy, go for it. No prize yet. There will be a prize. I just don't know what it is yet. And that starts, it has to be finished between November 1st and December 31st. I will not be casting on the sweater that I'm counting as part of it until November 1st. We'll talk about that later, though. Let's talk about how my children are about to bust in on me. In actuality, let's talk about what I finished recently. I say recently because the first thing I'm showing you I finished a couple weeks ago. But I couldn't show you because it was a test knit for Megan um, Just Run It of the Stockinette Zombies. And it is her Sugar High Cowl. So I don't have it buttoned right now. But it is a cowl. You turn it into a cowl with these buttons. It was the first time that I had done smocking. So that was really cool. I read the pattern and I was like, what? And then I did it and I was like, brilliant, very cool technique. She designed it based off of the um, molecular structure of sugar molecules, I think. Whatever, however you look at it, it's really cool pattern. I did the small version. There is one that takes four buttons at the end and one that takes five. I did four. You can wear it a bajillion ways because there are buttonholes at the end but on the edges, there are also eyelet sort of things, so you can button it up along the edge. I'm not going to try it on for you because I am very warm. My craft room gets the lion's share of the heating. The rest of the house is still warm, but 
my craft room is easily three degrees warmer than the rest of the house, so I'm quite warm right now. I am not going to put this on for you. This was made using Stylecraft Vision, which is DK. And I got this in a swap. It came to me from England, and I was sent two balls, which turned out to be, they're 309 yards um, a piece, so just over 600 yards. And I couldn't find a pattern that I liked for DK weight to use all of it at once. So it's been sitting since January in my stash. I don't have a lot of DK in my stash, so when Megan was like, do 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 DK, I was like, oh, well, I guess I'll use this, which is fun because it turned out beautifully. And I still have a ball plus, you know, this. I didn't weigh it. And this was actually kind of perfect because one of my good friends, who is my best friend, Becca's sister, she really likes hand knits and she really likes the color green. So Christmas knitting, go, go. Most of the stuff that I'm working on is for people for Christmas right now. That's fantastic. The pattern is really great. Um, Megan and Amy are going to have a knit along for their two patterns starting soon. I was only kind of paying attention when they were talking about it on the podcast. Fail. But since I already knit the pattern for the cowl, I'm probably not going to knit it again. And I like the hat, but I don't really have a lot of recipients for hats. The other four finished objects that I have this week, though, I finished this week. The first one is, spoiler alert, the Mystery Knit Along from uh, Maltran Design, the Sakatumi socks. And here they are. I knit them on US size 1 2.25 millimeter needles using Red Heart Stardust in the colorway purple. There is fantastic, it's a fantastic diamond pattern with a um, non-traditional toe, which I liked. And I went with the decorative heel option, which matches the cuff. So that worked out well. These are not for me. They're for my sister, who I make all of the things. She deserves it, though. Trust me. Um, what else can I say about those? I've been talking about them every week, so I think that I've said pretty much everything I can say other than it was an enjoyable knit, well written. The, the stitch pattern is both charted and written for the 64 inch, 64 inch, 64 stitch size. And I think there are plans for the 80 inch chart or something. I don't know. 80 inches, really? Stitches. 80 stitch chart. But I don't know because it doesn't concern me. So I didn't really pay attention. Sorry. I finished the Wrigley Socks by Sarah Bueller. These are made using Knit Picks Simple Stripes. No colorway name. Last week I was, oh, here-ish. So I did heels, feet, toes. I think they turned out really nice. Also not for me, though. These are for Steve's mom. It's okay, she doesn't watch the podcast, so she won't know. I'm pretty sure she doesn't even know I have a podcast. Most people in my real life don't. But what do I have to say? I had something to say about this. The pattern has a lot of purling. So if you are afraid of purling or really, really don't like purling, this is possibly not the pattern for you. But I enjoyed it. I don't love purling, but I have healthy respect for it. But all of this, there are, I think you can see the knit stitches, but how there's lots of purling on that pattern. And then there's purling on the top of the toe too, which is really, really 
interesting to like wrap my head around it that the toe wasn't just knit, 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 decrease, knit, 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 decrease. It added interest and I enjoyed that about it. Next FO, these are Mara's tube socks. This big chunk of pink is um, Dreaming Color Smushy. I don't know the colorway. And the sparkly pink is Fiber Nymph Dye Works Bedazzled. I did a tube sock with um, just a basic toe and then knit for a while until I figured that was about a quarter of the length I wanted total and then did knit seven purl one up to here which is about half the length I wanted and then I changed to knit three purl one until I got to I folded it over at the halfway point and where the toe started that is where I started the knit one purl one cuff and for the top because I didn't mind if it flared out a little bit because she's kind of sometimes she's girly she she has decided that maybe she likes ruffles now. She has a couple ruffle shirts that she's like, uh, maybe I'll wear these. I kind of like them. So I decided that it wouldn't be so bad if I used the bind off where you knit two stitches, then knit both together through the back loop, knit a stitch, knit two together through the back loop from the, um, from the right hand needle. So you're always going up to two stitches down to one. That's what I did on her socks, and they will be pretty stretchy, you know, about the same as Gabriel's were, and they'll look nicer after they're washed and stuff, but that's what it looks like. <laughs> I finished these last night, and it took me probably half an hour after I finished the socks to get up the nerve to weave in the ends, which was just up here because I wove in the ends as I went for all the color changes. If someone could come up with a way to weave in that final end while you're knitting instead of having to weave it in at the end, they would be my best friend. The last finished objects I have are Owl Puffs and I don't actually have them because I put them in the package that I made for neighbors down the street. I talked about the the boo package last week and you're supposed to make two packages to give out which I've done. I made owl puffs because they have the, the family has you know three girls and I thought it would be fun to make five owls so that the parents and the kids could each have an owl and I wanted to um I wanted to challenge myself a little bit so I magic looped all five of them at once which was not too bad. I don't have a hard time keeping the yarn from tangling in that sort of situation because I did it sitting here at my desk. So I had all five balls lined up behind the owl puffs. When I finished needle one, I flipped the needle clockwise. And when I finished needle two, I flipped it counterclockwise. So there was ever only one half twist of yarn, which I then untwisted after I finish the next needle. They're made using sock yarn scraps and US size 1 2.25 millimeter needles. So what am I working on then since I finished all those things? Not a ton. It did not work on the Nightingale socks. Probably not going to work on them until after Christmas now because I'm feeling the crunch. I am sad that I did not work on them like I said I was going to. And now they're going to sit there. But they're going to be amazing when they're done. It's just going to take time to get there. Also, before I talk about what I am working on, what I'm not doing this week is casting on anything new until November 1st. I know, that's forever away. That is three and a half days from now. going to force myself to work on projects that I have on the needles because I need to get I need to get things done so possibly the nightingale socks will get some work I also have the nebula socks for myself that I got through the heel on the first one and then stopped 
because I messed up the gusset and ripped it back and just haven't picked it back up since. So I could work on those. I also have the lakeside socks that I'm making for Mary Lee. I could work on those. <gasps> Lies. There is one project that I'm planning to start and finish by the 30th for Josh's Knit Along. Sort of a knitter is having a knit along for his own patterns. And I wanted to make rock strata mitts for Amanda. So those will start and finish before November 1st. But other than that, that's it. I'm going to finish things that I'm working on. And the rock strata mitts are super fast, so that hardly counts. That's like the owl puffs. I did those in a day in between other projects. Anyway, so what I am working on. Remember that fiber cat mystery bat? Well, I started it. This is what I won from my team for Tour de Fleece. It contains a blend of two or more of the following. Wool, mohair, silk, bamboo, nylon, and cashmere. I can tell you for sure it doesn't have cashmere because I can spin it. If it had cashmere, no way. Definitely has wool. There might be mohair because sometimes I feel slightly itchy, and mohair makes me slightly itchy, but it's not like cashmere that makes me red and itchy and have to stop what I'm doing. There are, let's see, the, there are these white bits that I, I'm not sure what they are, but maybe silk or, um, silk or nylon, you see that, that white streak? I'm not sure what they are, but they are really slippery. So that sounds like silk or nylon to me, right? That's what I heard, is that they're slippery. Or maybe bamboo. Bamboo is also allegedly slippery. I haven't spun enough with silk or bamboo to know, and I've never spun anything with nylon in it. So I don't know. This is what I have left of the two ounce bat. I'm spinning it on my... Um, Rogue, Rogue Lucette. I feel terrible that I can't remember. Rogue Lucette spindle that I got at the um, a wool gathering in Youngstown, Ohio. So this is what's on there right now. And I've spun two cups that I have already put onto um, my my super awesome Kate, Lazy Kate. This one I wound off onto the needle because um, there was a little bit of sticky residue where the price tag was that's on my spindle that I just haven't taken the time to take off, even though I, I've spun three different small fiber projects and this is the fourth. Yeah, I still haven't taken care of that could have didn't so I couldn't just slip it off for this one and this was the first one and I was like well I'm pretty dumb so I wound it off onto this needle this one has a cough drop wrapper on the inside of it because that is what I put to cover the sticky part and this one has a, a cough drop wrapper covering the sticky part too so I'll be able to slide this off I'm planning on doing a two ply with this but the spindle can't handle a lot of weight. When it gets weight, it's it slows down, or it stops spinning faster. So I'm trying to keep it lighter weight, and I don't mind splicing my singles together when I'm plying. That doesn't bother me. So that is how I'll be doing it. This is the first time that I've spun from a bat. So I'm spinning from the fold, which I'm going to show you really quick, because, by the way, you guys, I love the Potiversary chatter thread that's going on. Love it. I'm loving the ideas that you guys are throwing out for um, things you'd love to see. If you have questions that you want to ask, feel free to ask them, like, um, I don't know, personal type questions. As long as they're not insanely personal, I will answer them on the podcast. Whatever you want. If you've already posted in that in that thread, feel free to post again because it's a shatter thread. Anyway, so this is how I'm spinning. I'm spinning from a fold. So I take a chunk off. 
and you know that's kind of long so I usually pull it so it's not so long and put it in half over my finger and Draft that out a little bit and then start spinning. I usually spin standing up. I find spinning sitting down extremely awkward because the spindle doesn't have anywhere to go right now, especially because it's going over my lap. So yeah, draft from the fold. And what that does is it just pulls the, the fiber a little differently. I'm enjoying it. I usually spin from the end most of the time when I'm spinning from, you know, a braid or something. But this is a bat, so I decided to try something different, and I've heard a lot about people spinning from the fold on bats, and yeah. Oh, let me show you how, uh, how thick-ish is my ideal for this fiber. Sometimes it goes a little bit thinner because, you know, it's my first time doing a bat. It's my first time doing this style of spinning. So that's, you know, how thick the fiber is. Not super thick, not super thin. We'll see how it comes out. It's definitely not as thin as I was spinning my sock yarn fibers. But it's coming along pretty well. I think I will, well, I'm definitely gonna have this done in the next few days because it's really the project that I really, really wanna work on. So definitely finishing that before next week. The other project that I am working on is the Houndstooth Hundestrike Jack by Karen Roman. I don't know how to pronounce that. She doesn't know how to pronounce it. She wanted something that sounded German, so that's what she went with. That's what it says in her pattern notes. It's a free pattern on Ravelry, and it is... Bum, 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 houndstooth, Fair Isle, Awesomeness, in a dog sweater. I'm using Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Superwash in grass and red. So they're like bam in your face Christmas. They're not the colors that I would go with. I think they're showing up a little bit muted for you because they're like Crayola red and Crayola green. What's showing up on my camera right now is a much more muted like darker red and darker green, which I would prefer. If I was making this for you know, a dog in my life. I started it last week. I cast it on. I think I told you that I casted it on. And then I didn't work on it because here I'm using interchangeable needles. And they're not fancy dancy interchangeable needles. They are go to Michaels and pick up interchangeable boy needles. Well, I left it on my desk and it got knocked on the floor and a child stepped on it and snapped the join inside the needle. So I spent a few days freaking out being like, what am I going to do now this needle is broken because there's something snapped in it. And then I realized that I could just take my fingernail because it snapped in a way that there's a ridge in the middle. So I could take my fingernail and unscrew it from the needle. So the needle tip is fine, but this cable is obviously broken. I'm not sure what to do. I know that you can order replacement cables for it, but I don't love the cables because they're really, really stiff. This joint right here is kind of obnoxious. Like, stitches get stuck on here, especially on smaller needles. This, you can see that my fingernail is in it. I don't love it. I don't mind it for projects working with worsted weight yarn. That's fine. These sweaters are fine on it. Um, I think I did the DK weight cowl on my interchangeables as well. But for smaller needles, it's just no. So I don't, I haven't seen Knit Picks cables in person, but I'm thinking that I, if I order from Knit Picks in the near to mid future, I might just order a cable because they're four bucks for a cable. So if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, but at least I tried it. But I'm going to see if maybe they, the tips work, the tips that I have work with these needles. Because the, the, the needles, the, the cables look similar. It looks like they have this screw part 
with this hole for the key. So maybe they'll be the same size, and if not, it's a small investment to find out that I was wrong. If you know one way or the other that the cables, the Knit Picks cables work with the Boy interchangeable tips, let me know, because I don't mind these tips. They're pretty good. Like, they're not super sharp, but they're not really blunt. This is the size 2, and I could do cables using that. This is a size 7. I don't know the millimeters for it. I forgot to write it down. 2.75 and whatever 7 is. Sorry for not writing that down. This is actually the second cable that has broken from the set, and I got this set um, two years ago. So I'm down to two cables, this one and one that is um, a couple inches shorter. I broke the long one. The long one broke right here where the you can see the metal peg right here. It just broke where it goes down, so that was really a bummer. Anyway. Those are the two things that I've worked on other than the things that I finished. <gasps> I forgot something that I wanted to tell you. This is what I have left from the pink from Mara socks. I was getting really close to the end, and that's why there's the striping. Yes, I'm going back to finished objects. My podcast, I do what I want. That seems to be my theme recently. I decided to start striping because I was running out of this light pink and... My plan, my original plan, was to do the toes and just the cuff with the sparkly pink, but then I realized that I was going to run out of the light pink before I got to where I wanted the length to be. So I started striping in the sparkly yarn, and I think I could have done half a round on each sock using this. But I decided to just go ahead and stop it there. So yeah, I used up all of this. This is no longer sitting in my stash. And I used up about half of this ball. So, you know, the rest might just make it into my sock yarn blanket. Because there's not very le much left. Unless I think of something really, really soon. Sock yarn blanket time. I'm really excited that someone... I can't remember your name. I remember that your rav name has a numeric in it, which is a 1. I can't remember what it is. I love that you said that you enjoy watching my sock yarn blanket grow, because I enjoy watching my sock yarn blanket grow, but I didn't know if it was boring for people. So I'm glad that you said that. And this is how much it's grown this week. As always, stitch markers indicate the squares that I made this week. I did 7 because I had a lot of um, other projects to work on. I really wanted to get all three pairs of those socks done, so I just did my, my bare minimum goal for the week, which is seven squares. And these are all made with yarn from Haley, and I'm going to finish off my yarn from Haley. Not that it's all gone. I still have more Haley yarn, but every color is used once, and then I put it in the bag for later. So I'm going to use these, and I'm going to make a big square with this, so it'll be four, five, six, seven. That's how I'm going to get my seven for the week, and I think it's going to be beauteous. And then after I work with the Haley yarn, I will be moving on to Jenna yarn. Jenna is the dyer behind 716 Knit, and I'm going to tell you about the new things. I got so much post this week, pretty much every day. I'm not going to go in order of when I got them. I'm going to go in order of I was talking about Jenna, so now I'm going to show you what I got from Jenna, which is actually from my sister. My sister ordered me some sweater yarn, and Jenna the dyer sent some little extras. So these are going into my sock yarn blanket in two weeks. These will be in there. I love her colors. They're crazy, in-your-face, bright. Oh, so much love. Excellent for me for socks and, you know, maybe an accessory or two, but not a sweater. You know what she does do fantastically in sweater quantities? These darker, rich colors. Kind of tonal, 
This is Dead Guys on Ice. And this is why my sister gets all the things made for her. Because she ordered this for me to make a sweater for myself. This is what I'll be casting on with on November 1st. It's okay to be jealous of my sister right now. It's okay to want to be her sister because I want to be her sister. So yes, yeah, 716 Boss. That's the type. Dead Guys on Ice, which is 100% Superwash Merino and is a DK weight. And this one, I'm going to show you. Okay, this one has a really good spot hanging out. So there's several colors of blue and then this gray. It's just beautiful and a good color for me. Not my normal color. But Jenna had this in a sweater quantity. And she had a coupon code for 25% off, which if you watched an en enabling thread, which you should if you want to be enabled, and you probably shouldn't if you don't, 25% off. So one of these skeins was free for my sister, assuming she used the coupon code, which I imagine she did because I sent it to her when I was like, hey, sweater yarn. I didn't ask for this sweater yarn out of blue. My sister just started VKNing with my VKN friends and I. Um, she did, I don't know, two or three this week. And it's not the first time she's VKNed. She's VKNed while she was visiting me here, but it was the first time she VKNed by herself from her house, which was really exciting. My friend Briar was working on a, a sweater. It's a hooded sweater. I can't remember the pattern. And Amanda was like... Heather, you should make me a hooded sweater. And I was like, you should buy me yarn for a sweater for you and a sweater for me. And of course. And she was like, okay. Because I was saying it to be snarky. And she was like, yeah, totally. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I want this yarn. This yarn. I didn't expect her to buy it because it's indie dyed. It's expensive-ish. More expensive than big commercial dyers. So I sent it to her and I was like, but there's a coupon code, you know, being snarky is, I should, I should say, because, um, a lot of my sister, what we have, what our dialogue is snarky. That is how people from Michigan, from our area of Michigan communicate. All of my friends are full of snark. A lot of their friends are full of snark. That's just how we communicate. And to some people, it can come off really, really rude. And we don't mean it that way. That's just the way that we communicate. My boyfriend um, calls me out on being snarky all the time. And I'm like, I'm not being snarky on purpose. This is just how I talk. Anyway, I sent her the link. And then we talked about Knit Picks yarn instead. And she ordered this for me because she's amazing. And this is why she gets all the things. This is why she gets three pairs of thigh hides when she wants them and socks like crazy and accessories she gets spoiled with the knitted goods because she gets me the supplies to make the things that I want oh so in love with this it's super squishy if you haven't checked out 716 knit you need to 716 knit dot big cartel dot com she does fantastic hand paints she does self striping she's fantastic I love Jenna she also designed really fantastic things, and you have seen them. Anyway, let's move on to something else because I feel like I'm getting lengthy now, and I have a lot to talk about still. This actually came last week from Megan. She sent me a little thank you package for test knitting her pattern, which I thought was super, super nice. Super amazing. She asked me for my address to send me a small thank you, and I feel like this is not a small thank you. Because what it is, is there were three stickers on here, but my children, they, um, they took them. They're all zombie related. I managed to save one. Mmm brains. A little notebook that she made. And a Stocknet Zombies tape measure. Wolf Farms Chapstick in Wild Zombie Cherry which I've been using since I got here, and it's amazing. 
I love it. And fantastic absolute wonder stitch markers. Fabulous. My definition of small thank you and her definition of small thank you are not the same thing, but I think I like hers better than mine. Just amazing. But that's not all. Last week or the week before or something, I won a I won the um, birthday thread prize thing where you tell about your celebrations from the Stockinet Zombies because their podiversary just happened. And I won a skein of yarn of my choice from the Sun Valley Fibers shop online. So Sun Valley Fibers. This is Woodside Gold. That's the colorway. And it is 8020 Merino Nylon. I was so excited to win this because I really, really, really wanted to buy some Sun Valley Fibers stuff from ZK. But by the time I got over to the booth, the only things left had cashmere in them. So I couldn't even touch the pretties on the table. I could just look and be very, very sad. There had been some 100% superwash wool in worsted weight, but that had all sold by the time I got over there. But now I have some Sun Valley fibers in this awesome green color. It's a little more yellow than it's showing up on my screen. So I don't know color quality for you, but I'm excited to use this. It feels really, really nice. It's very squishy. The twist is really nice. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be fantastic. And they sent me a tape measure. This is kind of great because I have two tape measures. Well, I had before this two tape measures, but here's the one. Do you see how my children destroyed it? I got this in January from the same person who sent me this yarn. And um, my children, they, they loved it so much that it's worked and not really usable. And the other one I got from another swap and it's a little bit bent. It's a metal one, a little tiny metal one. It's a little bit bent in some places. So it's not the most accurate tape measure ever. These two will be going into my rotation and I will try to keep them away from the children now that I can give them the other two to play with, which will, once they have um, played with them to their content, they'll be going in my drawer just to look at because they have memories attached to them. I'm a little bit of a hoarder sometimes. I try not to be, but it happens. The last package, which was not the last package received, but you know, the last package I have to talk about is some Kriya alpaca and wool from Jenna. She sent it to me because we're friends and she's awesome. She had this process because she had the Kriya alpaca from a friend of hers. The friend went to visit her boyfriend's family. I wrote this all down and I can't find the, the, um, the note card that I wrote it all down on, so this might be wrong. Jenna, I'm sorry if this was wrong, but this is what I remember writing down. Jenna's friend went to visit her boyfriend's friend, her boyfriend's family, and they live on a farm or something, and the farm next door was shearing their alpaca that day. So her friend went over and sheared an alpaca for the first time, and then gave it to Jenna because she didn't have any use for it. So the alpaca sat around in a garbage bag or something for a while on Jenna's porch until she got this wool, which came from, ooh, here's the note from Jenna. That tells me where the wool came from. Let's see, it's Coradale. And the sheep is from a farm in Pennsylvania. That's PA, right? PA is Pennsylvania, it says PA. So I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure that's Pennsylvania though. And it's baby alpaca, baby Korea alpaca. So yeah, that's from North Collins, New York. It is soft. It's not, it's not Merino soft, but it's soft and it doesn't make me itchy and I can do this and it doesn't make me itchy, which is a big deal for me. 
to be able to put things on my face and not get itchy. And this is probably going to be my next spinning project once I get the blue off because I just love it. I love natural colored rovings and stuff. I don't know, is this, is this a roving? I don't know the difference. But it's four ounces and Jenna is amazing and I can't wait to spin it. I started reading Ender's Game. Oh my goodness, it is amazing. I didn't start reading it until Thursday last week and I'm almost done with it. I think I'm at 80% since my Kindle. It follows Ender. That's the nickname that this little boy gives himself as he goes through battle school. The idea is that um, 80 years ago or something, a while ago, the Earth was attacked by an alien race and now there are programs in place to train people to be the best commanders and soldiers in order to demolish the enemy should there be another invasion. Ender is the, he's like the prodigy. So, I'm really, really enjoying it. Definitely finishing it in the next couple days especially since I'm not allowing myself to cast any. I'm really enjoying it. It's kind of, it reminds me a little bit of Lord of the Flies in that the community is mostly made up of children and it's children who are running things, children who are running the army drills. The teachers are there, but kind of at the peripheral. So there's a lot of things that the teachers don't see. And these are young kids. Ender goes, Ender goes in when he's six to battle school. And you graduate from battle school when you're 16, I think. And then you can go, if you get through that, you go through pre-commander training and then commander training. So these are kids running these things. You can graduate earlier than 16, though, I think. This is what happens when there are certain things that I don't consider super important for the story. So that's why I, I can't tell you, because I didn't really pay attention to that particular paragraph. I'm really, really enjoying it. It's really, really good. Three reasons to enjoy Halloween. That's happening on Thursday. I'm excited. Number one, it lends itself to creativity. My kids are still at the age where it's cool for me to make their costumes, so I like to make their costumes. We'll have pictures next week so that you can see. Number two, I can impose a candy tax on my kids for taking them trick-or-treating, and do. I did last week when we went trick-or-treating. There was candy tax. I took away all the good chocolates. And number three, which is the most important in my opinion, is that it kicks off the season to giving. Strangers give kids candy. Strangers give each other little surprise packages for the boos. I mean, they're not complete strangers. I have an idea of who might have left that boo for me, but it's just people, you know, people start giving without worrying about what they're getting back, which sets up Thanksgiving very nicely and sets up the Christmas giving season, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, other things that go on during that time. Sorry, I'm not very knowledgeable. It sets it all up. I'm about to be invaded. So I hope you made something fantastic with your sticks and string, and I will see you next week. Bye.